guys, my name is Micah Watson and today I'll be telling you how to use the frequency shifter in Ableton Live. So the frequency shifter, this little audio effect, is really simple to use and it has some really awesome powerful applications yet it seems to be incredibly misunderstood. So I really hope that I can demystify it and give you confidence that you can use this. So, in your browser, go to Audio Effects and uh, Frequency Shifter, and I'm going to pull it in over here. I've just got an operator, which is an instrument, because I want to use it to generate a sine wave. And then I've got my Frequency Shifter, and then the Spectrum I'm just putting after the Frequency Shifter, so that I can demonstrate to you how this Frequency Shifter is affecting the waveform. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the Frequency section, and then separately to that I'm going to talk about the LFO section over here and then I'm going to put it together and then at the end of the video I'm going to tell you the difference between frequency shifting and pitch shifting or transposition because there is a difference and I will also give you some ideas for how to use it so that you can begin practice using it today. So first of all let me fold my operator you don't really need to see that. And just another tip, if you guys are following this at home and you've pulled in Spectrum and you're only seeing it down here, just double click on it and it'll make it bigger over here and then you can change the window size so we can make it nice and big even, which I think I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm using my keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. I've got this button over here enabled and I'm clicking an A over here, which as you can see generates this waveform. Now if I hover my mouse around, you can see at the bottom left there's this little box and it tells me the x and y values of that point. So you can see this is about 265 hertz. Not exactly, because my mouse wasn't exactly on the right spot, but around 250. Okay, now let's activate this frequency shifter. I'm making sure my LFO is off. I've got it set to 0 hertz under amount, so it's not going to do anything. So we're just looking at this part over here. And let's make sure our mode is on shift, and we've got dry wet to 100. The frequency shifter takes an incoming signal and moves the frequency. It shifts the frequency. It's as simple as that. How much does it move the frequency by? Well, that's what you determine with these two knobs. This top knob over here is your coarse frequency knob, so basically larger increments of hertz are defined with this knob, whereas your fine knob over here, which are smaller increments of hertz, and they're literally doing the same thing. If you change this to 350 and you've got your fine to zero, then your frequency is being shifted by 350. Let's have a look. So that's about 613 now. Again, remembering these values are rough. Without the frequency shifter, it was about 262. So 262 plus 350 is about 612. Yeah, 613, 612. You're literally adding the frequency, and whether I put 250 over here and 100 over here, I'm going to get the same result because the frequency shifter is going to take the incoming signal, add 250 hertz, and then also add 100 hertz. It's exactly the same as this. So just bear in mind that the same thing. Now you have another mode. You've got your ring mode. Ring changes your frequency shifter mode from your simple frequency shift to ring modulation. Well, what does ring modulation do? In this specific case, ring modulation takes your frequency over here, so here I've got 1 hertz minus 4 hertz, so basically minus 3 hertz, and it adds and subtracts that value from your incoming signal. And that is why you're getting this wobbling type effect, because it's going high a little bit and down a little bit. If we increase this value, it'll be a lot more drastic. Now I just want to add, it's adding and subtracting these frequency values to all the different peaks as you can see further down the waveform, not just the fundamental. And same with shift, so here I'd be adding 96 hertz to everything. Now you've got additional controls, you've got wide over here, which just changes the signal in your left and your right speakers or headphones so that it sounds a little different. This stereo effect is created by inverting the polarity of the spread value for the right channel. So for instance, if your left channel has your fundamental of like 250 and it's added 100 hertz to that, then your left channel is going to subtract 100 hertz from that and that's why it's going to sound a little tremolo-ishy. And to hear the same thing with ring modulation, a little bit more drastic. Then you've also got this drive control which you can activate only in ring mode and shift mode it's grayed out and you can't use it and this just adds a bit of drive so I want to make sure I don't make things too loud and destroy your ears but if you increase the drive 
you can see it pushes up the amplitude of everything and creates some distortion. And that is your frequency section without using any of the LFOs. Now let's just set this all to zero. Now we're looking at the LFO section. This frequency shifter contains two LFOs that modulate the frequency for the left and the right stereo channels. So these LFOs act on the incoming signal after it's gone through all of this frequency shifting slash ring modulation process. To hear what that sounds like without any of the frequency shifting, I'm just going to hold a key on my MIDI keyboard and then change this LFO amount a little bit. Let's start with a sine wave and you'll actually be able to visually see how things change in this spectrum display. So I'm going to start with a small rate and a fairly small amount. So this is a sine wave. So it's going to go up and down and up and down. The faster the rate, the faster it'll do that. And if you change the shape, if you want a little siren, you can do that. And you can also sync the rate. So if you click this little icon of here, you can sync it to your metronome. I hope you can hear that sync. If you want to change your default metronome, you can also learn how to do that on this video over here. But that's your LFO, and you can change your phase, and this increases your stereo movement by setting the LFOs to run at the same frequency, but offsetting their waveforms relative to each other. So if things are 360 degrees, which is a full circle, your left and your right channels are moving the same way, because if you take a waveform and add 360 degrees to it, you're back in phase with it. But if you, say, go to 180, it'll be halfway through the waveform, which means the left channel is going to be in the exact opposite part of the wave than your right channel. And your offset shifts the starting point of each LFO along its waveform. So if you don't want it to start, say, at the zero axis or whatever, you want it to start a bit later. Now, how do these work together? Right, so we've got our frequency and shift mode. I want to add, say, 640 hertz with no LFO. This is what it sounds like. I'm going to start introducing the LFO. You can now hear how this LFO influences the frequency shifting. And you can see the shape in the visualizer that it follows this shape over here. And with ring shifting, you can see they're like inverted. This wave shape over here is your sample and hold, and that's what this S and H stands for in your LFO slash S and H. How is frequency shifting different to transposing? Well, when you're transposing, you're retaining the ratio, the relationship between all the harmonics in your sample. So if I change my fundamental from 100 hertz to 200 hertz, this is going to affect all the harmonics if I play on a piano or a keyboard or a violin or whatever. And when I change a pitch from 100 hertz to 200 hertz, it doesn't just add 100 hertz to all the harmonics, it actually looks at the relationship. So from 100 hertz to 200 hertz, you're multiplying everything by two. So all the harmonics are multiplied by two so that this relationship is retained within the frequencies so that everything still sounds harmonious. But what this frequency shifter does, it just adds 100 hertz to everything, which means all the harmonics aren't going to be in harmony with each other or with the fundamental anymore. And that's why it sounds a little disorganized and a little crazy and frankly quite ugly. So that is the big difference. And when you're transposing over here and you're saying minus 25 semitones, you're changing the fundamental and you're retaining this relationship within all the harmonics. So that all the harmonics have also changed by the same ratio and not by the same amount in hertz. So if this frequency shifting destroys your harmonic relationship and makes things sound, and I quote myself, ugly, why on earth would you use them? Well, if you're into sound design and not like traditional classical music, well then your sound design options here are endless. I've got a random vocal sample over here. And I can completely destroy it. I'm also going to transpose it down. And I'll tell you the difference between transposing and frequency shifting shortly. But even in a classical realm, you've got instruments like tubular bells or cymbals that don't follow the normal harmonic spectrum. 
So if you're trying to tune drums like a cymbal, you can pitch shift it up here in your clip view. Maybe you've noticed this before, but it changes the character of the sound and it doesn't just pitch it up, it just actually changes the whole sample and it's not so great. But frequency shifting can really help because you can change the fundamental of the sample and give the cymbal a higher sound without changing all the upper harmonics as much as you would if it were pitch shifting, which means you still feel like the drum has been pitched up, but your whole harmonic series isn't going to be crazy high and artifacty sounding. You can also use this for phasing, so if you have a very gentle LFO, very small amount, small rate. You can also create tremolo type effects, here you'll want to be in ring mode, and frequencies below the audible range, so like 20 hertz or so. In fact, I can just use my fine tune control for that. Create a tremolo effect. And you can also impart a sense of stereo motion to the tremolo by turning wide on and using small spread values. So when I click wide here, you see that fine turn to spread. It's almost the same thing, except that when you're in wide, you're adding the spread to one speaker channel and you're subtracting it to the other. And of course, you can use it to make some robot voices. You can make sirens, like I showed you with the LFO on the operator instrument. And if you add a frequency shifter to a delay, you can get some really interesting effects as well. So I've added a frequency shifter to my send over here, to my delay track, and I've sent from this track a bit to delay B. So here I can hear the vocal clearly, but in the so-called reverb, in the delay, you create this interesting effect, which can really fill out a mix in a very interesting, unique way, especially if you sidechain that, maybe to a kick drum, so that you still kind of hear the drum over the mix. So those are just a couple of ideas. I hope that you're feeling confident to use this frequency shifter and inspired to play around. As always, thank you for watching. I'm doing a video like this for all of the audio effects, so if you're interested in that, please subscribe, and I will see you guys soon in the next one.